My name is Michał uh, Owsiak. I work for uh, Poznań Supercomputing and Networking Center in Poznań. And our work here in uh, Indigo is, uh, among the other stuff, is uh, related to the Kepler scientific workflow and applying stuff which is developed here to this uh, um, uh, workflow system. Uh, so, briefly, the agenda. Uh, we will go over the uh, Kepler uh, overview. I will tell you something about the Kepler, what it does, how you can use it, how you can build the stuff. Then we will uh, go via main uh, Kepler concepts, which will divide the, uh, the Kepler into smaller pieces so you can get the feeling how to build the workflows. And then we will go uh, over the examples of Kepler application in science. There will be like three, four examples so you can see where it is applied and how can you use it. And then, of course, we will move to the hands-on tutorial where you will be given uh, cards with the address of the server, which is based on Docker installation built in here in Indigo. And then you will connect there, build the workflow, and I hope you will be happy with this one. So what after this uh, workflow you should know? Basically, the general idea of the Kepler. So if somebody will tell you what that they use Kepler, then you will know what, is it, what, it, is, what it is. How to build uh, simple workflows, uh, how to use um, a control statement, because in the workflow system you have to create uh, control statements slightly different comparing to the regular langu languages. You have to tweak a little bit things and, uh, and change uh, a little bit the way you think. Uh, then we will move to the Python stuff, if, of course, you will be interested in this one. If people will be interested in Python, I will show you how you can directly from Kepler do some stuff in Python, like visualization, running scripts or whatever. And then uh, I will tell you a little bit about the um, uh, Kepler in the Indigo project and you will see uh, how it was already said, how all these components which you have heard about during these two days can be combined in a single tool. So what about the Kepler itself? It's a scientific workflow system which allows you to uh, build workflows. It is built on the Ptolemy uh, framework. The Ptolemy framework itself is responsible for running the workflow. The Kepler is uh, something above the Ptolemy which allows you to build workflows uh, in an easy way. Computations in workflow are actor-based. It means that whenever you want to calculate something, you want to do something, you have to have a specific actor which will do these calculations. It can be anything you like. Basically, anything you can program can be applied in uh, Kepler, of course, with some um, restrictions, but it's, uh, it's possible. Uh, you have different ways of running uh, uh, Kepler. I mean, the, the model which you, uh, which you build. We will discuss it later. And uh, basically, the whole stuff is developed mainly by uh, institutes in the US, but it's heavily supported by other people from all over the world because you can always contribute to Kepler. If you develop something, you can always create a so-called module, which you can then deliver to Kepler team, and everybody can uh, use this module and um, modify it, use it, whatever they want to do. And of course, uh, Kepler is used across different fields of science, just to name few, ecology, engineering, geology, physics, uh, climate change, etc. So you can, you can pick anything you like and probably you will find uh, samples there. Well, basically Kepler is just an application. It's a GUI-based application which uh, allows you to build workflows and allows you to run the workflows. You have uh, two ways of running um, uh, Kepler. You can either, uh, workflows, you can either run them directly in the GUI or you can run the workflow outside the GUI if you want to just perform calculations uh, without running the, the whole environment. Um, Kepler itself is a huge tool. It, at the moment, it has like uh, 500 different components which you can use for uh, calculations. It has like a one million line of codes. Uh, I know this measure can be uh, tricky, but basically it just shows you how, how much code there is and uh, how much stuff already was contributed to the Kepler itself. Uh, Kepler contains lots of uh, components which give you right away from running the, the Kepler cap ab abilities to do some calculations. Like uh, you have uh, components for uh, mathematic calculations like uh, functions, operators, um, actors dedicated for R or MATLAB. If you have a R-based script and you want to plug in the script in the, in the workflow, it's possible. You can just 
uh, inject it in the middle of the workflow and the R will be executed uh, together with the whole uh, workflow. You can visualize data uh, by uh, using plotters, image displays, you can manipulate data. I mean, uh, the, this typical basic types like uh, floats, integers, strings, uh, uh, RIs, tables. Uh, you can access uh, mm, uh, databases like uh, SQL based uh, databases. Uh, you can, um, you have support for Oracle, MS SQL, everything is uh, done via Java and everything is accessible. If something is accessible from Java, it's as accessible from Kepler. Uh, apart from this one, you have access to web services. So you can directly get components which will do something with, uh, for example, SOAP or REST-based uh, uh, APIs. You can uh, process XMLs. Uh, you can execute external stuff from the Kepler also via different uh, uh, ways of um, accessing this uh, external resources. You can run something on the cloud, uh, Hadoop, via Unicore. You can also run something via command line script, like uh, just executing uh, shell. Uh, you can also run Kepler itself as a bad job, which means that if you have like a workflow and dozen of parameters and you want to make a parametric scan, and run the same workflow for a different parameters, you can just run it on the uh, MPI environment and it will calculate as many instances as you like at the same uh, time. <laughs> and of course, there are so-called modules, which are, which are field specific, like uh, for example, BioKepler or GAMES or um, uh, sensor processing. These modules are prepared by people who focus on a given uh, topic and they, uh, contribute these modules to the Kepler repository so everybody else can uh, download them. When it comes to the languages that uh, Kepler supports, you can probably use anything you like as long as you can run it from Java. So first of all, the Kepler itself is uh, written in Java, which means it will run probably everywhere you can imagine where, where Java is available. Uh, you can use directly from the Kepler uh, scripting languages like uh, Groovy, JavaScript, or Jiton. You have a dedicated actors which allows you to, to run this uh, workflows, uh, this, uh, this actors. You can execute Python uh, either via calling uh, Python via GNI or by calling it as external process. And you can even run Fortran, of course, also via GNI or GNA. I'm not sure whether you are aware, with this, uh, you are aware of these technologies, but th these technologies allows you to run native code directly from Java, which means that if you have already existing native code, you can also run it uh, in Kepler. Um, once you have the workflow itself, uh, it can be executed in different ways. That's what I said in the, in the very beginning, that you have this uh, special uh, dedicated um, components which are, allows you to run uh, the same workflow in a different way. You can run it as a sequ sequ sequential data flow, which means that every component will be executed one after another and nothing will happen in, in between. You can run uh, the workflow as a dynamic uh, execution model, which means that during execution you can decide where data will flow depending on uh, some conditions that you vary in the, in the workflow. You can uh, use something which is called processing network, which means that each and every actor will behave completely independently and will be run at the same time and will be, uh, called, will be executed in parallel. And you can base your computations on time, where you, the time dictates the execution of the, of the actors. Today we will focus on these two, uh, the sequential data flow and the dynamic data flow, because they are uh, most basic and probably most common use. So this is these samples which we will uh, go over today. We'll use these actors. If you take a look at the workflow, it's, uh, the Kepler itself, it provides you with the uh, few places, few areas, let's say. Uh, one of the main areas is this canvas here, which is used for putting all the elements which you want to run. And all these elements has to be connected, like you see in here with these lines and these lines determine the data flow between the components. And in the workflow, you can put uh, elements like directors, actors. Directors are these elements which uh, tell how to run the workflow. Actors tell how to um, perform some actions on data. Ports, which are here, allows you to transfer data between actors. And relations, like here, 
you can see this small element in here, allow you to split data, which means that if you have the same data, but you want to have it calculated with the different uh, uh, actors, and each actor do something else, you can just split the data. And uh, building, uh, building the workflow is just a matter of dragging and dropping components from the uh, search field in here and putting them together and linking them together. And whenever you build the workflow, you actually choose the element that has to do some calculation. You choose the data source you want to be uh, used for the calculations. In this case, we have uh, just a constant value, and this constant value will be displayed on the, on the screen. So we have two separate actors. This relation part, as I said, will split the data, and we say that this value should go here and here, and if we execute the workflow, you can see that we just get the result, which means that uh, the, the in, this input data was passed processed and uh, um, output uh, on, the, on the screen. Of course, this is a very trivial workflow, but we will start with something like this. Um, then um, another component, another set of components, which you will find during the tutorial and this hands-on uh, tutorial, is um, are these elements in here on top. These elements allow you to access most commonly used uh, elements like uh, ports, relations, uh, like running, stopping the workflow, resizing the workflow. If you have a very huge workflow and you want to focus on the particular area on the screen, you can always use this, um, uh, this, um, uh, this element this, um, uh, on, this, on the screen. And then what we have, the next uh, thing we have uh, are these basic blocks which, uh, which can be used. Directors are visible as uh, this icon. Typically, actors are a blue, uh, green uh, boxes. Sometimes they have icons, sometimes they don't. If somebody has a fantasy and have a very special icon, then the actor can have a different look, but typically they, they look like this. Then you have the connections, which are always the same. These are just the lines and relations. Uh, I've already told you about this different ways of running the workflow. So each model, which are described in a, in a, uh, like a few slides ago, uh, has a um, dedicated actor, uh, director. If you go to the search field and you will type in SDF, DDF, PN, or CT, you will find these directors which will determine the way of uh, working. And you simply drag and drop the, uh, the director on the screen, on the canvas, that's it. The workflow will run in this uh, particular uh, order. And um, uh, yeah, there is one more thing. Maybe I will just briefly go back to one slide because I forgot to mention. There is this uh, cheat sheet which allows you to determine how your workflow should work. So you have this uh, uh, simple yes, no um, uh, table where you just, does workflow explicitly depend on time? No, then you can choose from these uh, directors. Then whether the workflow require independent um, threads, et cetera, et cetera. And you can just look at this chart and decide what probably will be the best uh, model of execution in your particular case. Uh, when it comes to actors themselves, uh, that's exactly the the sample that the, the example that I've uh, mentioned uh, before. You see this, uh, Block here is empty, it's not green, but it's still an actor. But uh, this is a special actor which allows you to put something inside. That's why it looks slightly different. But basically, when we will use actors on, uh, when we will put the actors on the canvas, there will be uh, different ways actor behave. If actors have this uh, um, field uh, tri triangle here, it means that they require input. If they have an uh, empty triangle, it means that they can have multiple inputs and not necessarily have to have some data on the input because sometimes actors do not uh, require data. And sometimes you will have actors which will produce data regardless something is connected to this actor or not. Uh, because in this case, we have actor which produces data but do not require any inputs and produce the output. So it means that it will produce something but do not require anything um, on the input. When it comes to actors themselves, uh, there, is a few, there are a few ways you can use them. First of all, you can use existing actors. So you just go to the search field, you just choose the actor and put it on the canvas. You can build your own actors, so you can write them in a Java, Python, or Groovy, or whatever uh, language you choose. You can import actor from other people. So if somebody saves 
their own actor and provides you with the actor, you can just load it and use it later on in your own computations. And it applies to everything else. Somebody can save the whole workflow, you can load the workflow in your environment, and you will still be able to run uh, the workflow, of course, assuming that you have all the actors that I re require. And of course, you can install the whole modules which are provided by the people. And these modules typically contain lots of actors which are uh, field uh, specific, like, uh, I don't know, climate change or whatever. And there is one more thing that is worth to mention. It's a concept of so-called composite actors. Composite actors are something which wraps the workflow inside. It means that you can create a single block, you can go inside this block, you can fill it with anything you like, and outside this, uh, this block it will be still visible as a single block, but inside you will have the whole new workflow, which means that you can uh, create the workflow. Take a look here. We have a composite actor uh, at the very top, and then if we go inside and go deeper and deeper, we produce some data at the very bottom of the workflow, which means that we put here hello from the other side. And then when we run this very topmost workflow, we see the hello from the other side on the, uh, on the top of the, of the workflow, which means that we pass the data from the, um, from the composite uh, to the top. Uh, how this apply to uh, any work? Well, it applies in a such way that you can save the whole composite actor as an actor, you can pass it to somebody else, and this person will have exactly the same block as you have, which means that you don't have to replicate the work. You just have to share the, uh, the workflow. Okay, so, well, now I will briefly go over the use cases in, uh, in science, uh, and then we will go to the hands-on uh, tutorial. But I just want to show you few places where the, the Kepler is used. So first of all, uh, my team is working uh, in a refusion project where we develop uh, Kepler workflows and we uh, help people to integrate different codes which simulate um, uh, nuclear, uh, which simulate iter and demoplasmas. And we use Kepler as this main workflow system. And people just develop single blocks uh, which represent their own codes which simulate something in, in plasma. And then we connect everything and we help them to do this as efficiently as possible. And as you can see here, we merge lots of different codes because we work with uh, Fortran, C++, Python, C, Java, and uh, MATLAB. And all these things has to somehow be connected and work efficiently. We are trying hard to make it as uh, seamless for the user as possible. And um, we have a single database which contains the data for all the workflow, uh, for all the codes which can exchange the data. And uh, basically we have like a 90 users more or less together with support team. So that's, that's a small crowd of people working on the, on the stuff. Uh, we had to build our own uh, building system for all the staff because we want to make everything uh, to be fully tagged and versioned such way that in any case, anybody decides to take any version of uh, the workflow, it will always work, assuming that he or she is using the same set of components. And uh, just a brief architecture of this uh, solution. So on top, we have a Kepler. As you can see, it's, of course, it's not exactly the same as Indigo case. But as you can see, it's very similar. The Kepler is on top, and then we just go lower and lower, and we use um, more close to system uh, layers. So we just, uh, we have a Kepler for each actor which is created by user, we have, a, we have um, uh, for each code created by user, we have actor. You will see this, you will see this uh, when I will talk about future gateway and how we access the future gateway. This is something which uh, was described by Ricardo yesterday. Uh, and you will see the similar similarities here. Then we call uh, this different languages and eventually we just go deep to the system libraries if they are required. And uh, that's one of the workflows we create. This is just a, a huge loop which uh, goes over the time index and calculates data for a different, um, a different codes. Uh, then we have a, a nanotechnology uh, case which is uh, the workflow is called uh, Anneli. Uh, and uh, it had more or less the same uh, set of requirements. So we need the easy way to add something new. Uh, we have to um, uh, 
we have to have the way to parameterize the stuff and trigger the execution. And uh, of course, we uh, want to run everything in a, as a parametric scan in a para parallel environment. Uh, and that's what's possible with Kepler. That's what I said in the very beginning, that Kepler can be, as a whole, executed in, in parallel. And that's why uh, we use this GUI-less mode, which, where you don't run the GUI itself, you just run the workflow. And then, uh, typically, the workflows should be transparent for the users. If you parameterize the workflow and you just give the users the workflow plus way of parameterizing the, the workflow, you can easily give somebody something I mean, the, the whole stuff, they can just change some parameters and that's it. They can run everything uh, and get the outputs. The same refers to the, uh, to the astronomy. We have uh, another uh, workflow which was developed also in, uh, uh, in Kepler. It's based um, on standards developed in the astrophysics and the goal is uh, um, again to, uh, first of all, support the uh, VO services. Uh, as you can see, in this case, we needed some level of uh, interaction. It's possible from Kepler to interact with user because if you are running in the GUI mode, it's just a matter of showing something and asking user, just do something, tell me where should I go, and that's it. And users are able to do this. And of course, again, we have the integration of numeric codes because typically in all the scientific workflows, we deal with the same case. Everybody comes with a different solution for the same thing or some addition to the to the same thing, and we have to combine everything in a one piece. Uh, in a one in a one piece. And again, as you can see, we have something. Which, uh, we have the workflow, which provides you with the way of uh, setting parameters and running the whole case. And eventually, we have the same stuff for the uh, Indigo uh, data cloud. I'm not sure whether I have to go over this slide because I think you've seen this yesterday on the presentation, so I will skip this one and because this is exactly the same uh, stuff. Uh, when it comes to Indigo, the way we apply Indigo, Kepler inside Indigo is by producing Indigo Kepler module. Uh, this module allows you to use future gateway features and to run applications from the, uh, which are defined in the, uh, in the future gateway. Comparing to uh, the future gateway, the difference is that in um, what, you've, what you have seen yesterday, you were typically accessing APIs directly. So either via command line or any language that provides you with the RESTful APIs. And in here, we will, yeah, I will show you how to do this but using uh, Kepler itself. And uh, as for the, uh, for the Kepler, uh, it's based on the Docker, so everybody can just download from the GitHub, uh, at, well, I mean from the project uh, Indigo Data Cloud on the GitHub. You can download Docker and you can run it by yourself. You will be given installations which are already predefined and configured for this uh, tutorial today, so you don't have to do anything for now. Uh, the solution is based on uh, Future Gateway API, Everything is available here, as you can see, on the, uh, on the, on the um, GitHub um, repository. And um, what we will do today, probably we will not manage to get here because I don't think that in an hour, probably we will be able to do that much on the hands-on tutorial. But basically, I will show you in a minute how from the workflow we can go to the Ophidia result, which was discussed, uh, yeah just an hour ago, and this, uh, this will be again a different view on the same problem because we will do the same stuff but from the different place. So we will use Kepler and we will get the same results. And that's all for the presentation. So